I mean, we play this game on Sundays on the day we should be worshiping the Lord. I have a word that I want to share. I know this is a little untraditional, so like I said, buckle up. NFL linebacker Demario Davis from the New Orleans Saints has church on a Sunday instead of an NFL typical press release. I love it. You may have seen this already. If you haven't, this is what it's like to live bold. I had to share this with you. Let's check it out. Oh, man. Uh, I got a lot to say, so y'all buckle up. Let's go. Uh, I started to realize something. Um, man, we play this game on Sundays. And it's really the Lord's day. And when the day we should be worshiping the Lord, a lot of times the players are getting worshiped and we get to go on this ball field. So since so many of us didn't get to go to church today, I have a word that I want to share. I know this is a little Come untraditional. On. So like I said, <laughs> buckle up. Uh, Revelations 3.20 says, See, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and eat with him and he with me. I want to tell y'all about a knock that I heard this week. A lot of people don't know this, but on Friday, my daughter, she's four years old, she had her third um, epilepsy seizure attack. It's my same daughter who uh, survived retinoblastoma. Uh, she's been totally clear to that, but she had her, her third um, seizure. Now, before he continues, it's kind of funny how all of the NFL stats are flying below him and he's preaching and, and giving a testimony. This, this is beautiful. It's amazing. And it's been almost two years. She was uh, about a month away. If she would have had no seizures for one more month, then she would have been off the medicine. But now we have to start that clock all the way over. It was on Friday when we was a bunch of kids over the house and she was playing. And I noticed something was off. Um, and I told her mom I thought she was having a seizure. Her mom is pretty good. She, she saw it, my wife. And we took her in her room, didn't want to cause a scene. And she started to foam at the mouth. And uh, it was worse, her worst seizure. For 30 minutes, um, she seized. Um, she wouldn't come, and we had to call the uh, paramedics. They came. And so over the course of time, it ended up being a total of 30 minutes. They got her in. My wife got in the paramedics with her. I got behind them driving. Um, you can imagine all the thoughts that's racing through your mind. The last sight you see of your daughter is she's totally out of it. Um, got to the hospital and my wife told me that my daughter stopped breathing in the car twice. Mm. So, um, so I'm, of course, praying. We get to the hospital. They put, give a bunch of medicine. They should seize the stop. She's laying there. And at this point, if she sees for 30 minutes, you, 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 you start to fear there could be development issues that could mess with her brain. Um, you know, she stopped breathing. If there was no oxygen going to her brain, you know, you're starting to think about her speech be slurred or anything um, or worse. So we prayed and we prayed and she had medicine and, and my wife and I had to stay overnight at the hospital. And in the middle of the night, probably about mm -hmm. three o'clock, I heard a knock. And the knock, the knock was my daughter. I prayed for her. I said, God, mm -hmm. let this just be an attack from the enemy that's just trying to be a distraction and let him have overplayed his hand mm -hmm. and my daughter come back stronger than before. When I heard my daughter talk in the middle of the night, and my daughter, she doesn't have any develop, development issues, praise God. She doesn't have any slurred speech, you know, prior to this. She woke up talking clearer than she was talking before. Now, anyone come who on. deals with epilepsy knows that it takes a little a few days for them to come back. Now, I can certainly identify with this. I had a, one of my best friends growing up. His brother would have epileptic attacks, and it, it's true. It does take several days. They're kind of in a, in a daze, if you will, um, and not real clear with their speech, their mind is still in a fog. Uh, it's scary, especially when it happens. It, it's really scary, so I, I can't imagine. You know, they usually can get back to normal wherever they were, um, but it takes a couple of days, they're groggy, it's a lot because what their body is like, it's like the TV just static in their brain. Mm -hmm. She was talking clearer than before, and it was three o'clock and we heard her talk and we let her talk for about 20 minutes and we said, hey baby, it's, it's, it's nighttime, let's go back to sleep. Yeah. You know, and I just prayed, I started saying, praise God, praise God. The next morning, when she got up, my daughter was so sharp. She was able to talk to her, me and her mom. I mean, clear conversation. She's sharp for a four-year-old. No stuttering. All her words clear. And my daughter, like I said, my daughter is already sharp. She was sharper than yes. before. And if any, of, if any of you were able to have a conversation with my daughter, you wouldn't know anything had ever happened. Come on. So we had a birthday party for my seven-year-old daughter that day. God's she got good. to be released from the hospital, and she came back home. 
and it was as if nothing was happening. She was playing with the kids the day before. Now, that's when you know it's not just a typical attack and uh, quick recovery, but when they recover fully like this, somebody who has epilepsy and all of a sudden their, their mind is clear, they can speak clearly, like that's a miracle, right? That's a miracle. And she had the worst seizure that she had ever had. And the next day, hmm. she's back out there playing Let's with go. the kids. Now, of course, we can't let her get overstimulated. We have to keep bringing her in. Yeah. Have to keep cooling her down. Can't let her do too much just because of protocol. But when I tell you, uh, I, I got a chance to see hear a knock from God. And what I want to share is we get to play this game, and it's great. And there's so many amazing things that happen in that game. And everybody wants to hear about them. But when we lead this game, we go back to being regular people. Hmm. And regular people are living life. And people are waiting for a knock. Yeah. And the word says who Jesus is, he's knocking at the door. All you got to do is get up. And so on the way, man, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous, but I'm praying. Yeah. And I'm trusting. Come on. And I'm believing. And I'm asking for my daughter to make it through. I'm asking that she's better than before. Let's go. And God gave me just what I asked for plus some. Come on. I was blown away. And at that point, I knew, well, I, the game is already, it's, the game is going to take care of itself. My, my knock had already been, been answered. And I just want people to know, like, if you got stuff going on in your life, lay it before the Lord. Lay it before the Lord and trust. And be expecting of a knock. Come on. Because the word says what you have to do is you have to get up and open the door. He's not going to open the door for you. He's going to knock. But you have to be listening and waiting for the knock. And Come when on. you see it, you have to get up and open the door. And your blessing is going to be there. Now, I'm going to be here to talk about football next week. I wish y'all well. Happy Sunday and praise God. Thank y'all. Oh, man. I just, I love it. Can't get enough of that. I could watch that over and over again. Um, you know, Demario Thomas is so bold. And really what this channel is uh, all about is taking people who have huge platforms, who love the Lord and are proclaiming and making his name great. Uh, among the public, right? We need to hear more of this. And the boldness that he has, right? He preached, right? This is a, an amazing five-minute TED Talk sermon, if you will. And and I just, I just, I love it. I love his boldness. I love what he's doing. I love that he was like, hey, I'll, I'll talk about football next week. You know, I'll talk about football next week. Like, this is the Lord's day, right? It's the Lord's day anyway. We should be worshiping God. He shouldn't be worshiping players. And we didn't get a chance to go to church anyway. So let's have church. And he went there with intention. He went there prepared. He went there knowing that he wasn't going to talk about the game, but he was going to talk about the Lord and make the Lord's name great. And that's so admirable to be that bold national TV, national, you know, post game interviews. What happened? Well, let me tell you what happened. It's not what you think. It has nothing to do with the game that we just played, but it has everything to do with what happened in my real life and the faith that I have and the miracle that God did in my life. And I want to challenge you, uh, if you're a Christian listening to this and God does something in your life, share it. Share it with somebody else. Just be bold about it. He's unapologetic, right? A lot of times we we uh, get opportunities to share, and we come across as 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 God being a suggestion rather than the truth, rather than being unapologetic, rather than being just bold with our faith and said, "Hey, let me tell you what happened. God healed her. It wasn't like I think God, or it might have been, or we got lucky, or you know, we said a little prayer. It was like, no, we we prayed." For God to do a miracle, guess what? God did a miracle. God doesn't promise to heal everyone every time. Sometimes healing comes through the afterlife. Sometimes healing comes later. Sometimes like it's going to look a little bit different. So when he says that God healed his daughter, God did heal his daughter. God is going to do his will, right? But we got to be faithful. We got to have faith and we got to be bold and go before him and say, God, I need a miracle. I need a miracle. And just see what God does with that. I would love to hear your thoughts uh, on this. So, so comment below, comment below, like, subscribe, share. I'll see you on the next one.